in siyasatta sahi a similar question by suleiman khan birmingham uk what are the criteria that make a hadith sahi are all the sahi hadith of the same level why is sahi bukhari so special so the three questions have clubbed together talking about sahi bukhari and the criteria that make hadith sahi and what makes bukhari special regarding the first question that are all the hadith in sahi bukhari authentic and can it be compared to the quran yes all the hadith in sahi bukhari authentic there are 7563 hadith in sahi bukhari and all of them authentic can it be compared to the quran the quran is the word of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the quran is verbatim the word of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which was revealed to our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to our angel gabriel then the scribes the sahabas they wrote down and prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam checked it up personally he asked them to recite it he checked it if there was a mistake he corrected it and prophet peace be upon him used to rehearse it with our angel gabriel every ramadan and the last ramadan before he died he rehearsed it twice so that means the quran is 100% the word of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala verbatim revealed to prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the prophet dictated to the sahaba they wrote it down he counter checked it he revised it with archangel gabriel so quran is verbatim word to word without a difference even of a letter the word of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as far as say bukhari is concerned it is the most authentic book amongst all the books of hadith the highest level but the hadith are the things of the prophet and his actions some hadith are verbatim words but the others are meaning wise they are not verbatim the word of the prophet and they were heard by the sahabas sahabas memorized it then the tabi'in tabi'in tabi and the chain of narrators so it is not of that in the quran is the highest level it is the verbatim word of god the hadith are the things of the prophet if it's a sahih hadith we believe in it we have to follow it but natural quran is number 1 then comes the sahih hadith in sahih hadith the highest is sahih bukhari and it's ijma amongst the ahli sunnah wal jamaah scholars among the sunni scholars that after the book of allah after the quran the next in authenticity the next to be followed is sahih bukhari there is no doubt about it the second most important book of islam it is sahih bukhari come to the second question are all the hadith in siyasat authentic siyasat is actually a misnoma siyasat means six sahi it should be kutub sitta it is six books of hadith so kutub sitta is the right terminology for six books of hadith siyasatta is a misnoma siyasatta means six authentic books the right terminology is kutub sitta six books of hadith and this kutub sitta are the sahih bukhari sahih muslim sunan abu daud sunan tirmidhi sunan nisai and ibn majah these six books the scholars they say that if you read these six books of hadith you will come to know most of the rulings in islam but the hadith in all the six books are not 100% authentic the only books in which all the hadith are authentic and sahi are sahih bukhari number 1 then is sahih muslim the remaining four books sunan abu daud sunan tirmidhi sunan nisai and ibn majah in these four books most of the hadith is sahih but not all 100% So these six books the scholars say if you read and you read the Quran you will come to know most of the rulings in Islam most of it not 100% but most of it there is a small group of scholars who say that instead of Ibn Majah there should be Imam Muatta Malik so there is a small group of scholars who say the six books should contain besides Sahih Bukhari Sahih Muslim Sunan Abu Daud Sunan Nisa'i Sunan Tirmidhi it should contain Imam Muatta Malik instead of Ibn Majah that's a small group but we agree that six books are there if you want to join Imam Muatta Malik it becomes seven 
But most of the scholars say that Ibn Majah is included in this. So all the hadith of these six books, only the first two, Sahih Muslim and Sahih Bukhari, all authentic. The remaining four, majority authentic, but not all. There is a great scholar of the recent time, a muhaddis, that is Sheikh Nasruddin al-Bani. What he did, he has divided the last four books of Qutb al-Sitta into Sahih and Zaif. He wrote Hussain al Sahih and he differentiated the books of Hadith, the last four books, Sunan Abu Dawud, Asai Sunan Abu Dawud, Zayf Sunan Abu Dawud. Then he took the next book, Sunan Nisai, Sai Sunan Nisai, Zayf Sunan Nisai. Then he took the next book, Sunan Tirmidhi, Sai Sunan Tirmidhi, Zayf Sunan Tirmidhi. Then he took the last book, Ibn Majah, Sai Ibn Majah, Zayf Ibn Majah. So the Silsila is Sahih. So if you read this Silsila is Sahih, of Sheikh Nasr al-Albani, then you can come to know all the Sahih Hadith in the last four books of Qutb al-Sitta. He's done a great work. So this is how you can differentiate. Come to the third question, that what are the criteria for Hadith to be Sahih and what is so special about Sahih Bukhari and what are the categorizations of Hadith? As far as classification, and categorization of hadith is concerned, it is called as mustala hadith, that is the science of hadith. The Muhaddisins have classified hadith into very different categories. The three more important classifications, I'll tell you, there are many classifications. One is based on who is the original narrator. And according to Ibn Salah, he has classified the hadith into who is the originator. And number one, the highest hadith qudsi it goes up to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if it says that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it goes up to allah it starts with the narrator goes to the sahaba goes to the prophet and prophet said allah said that becomes hadith qudsi the highest category number 2 is the marfu hadith the hadith which reaches marfu means raised it reaches to prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam a chain of narrators are there, then it says the Sahaba's name, says that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said. So that becomes marfu. The third category is mawkuf, means top. It goes to the level of the Sahaba. So if the Hadith goes to the level of Sahaba, but doesn't reach the level of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is called as mawkuf. That is stopped. That is the third level. The fourth is the maktu, means cut off. It reaches to the Tabain. So if it reaches to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's called Hadith Qudsi. Reaches to the Prophet, it's called as Marfu Hadith. Reaches to the Saba, it is called as Mawquf. If it reaches to the Tabain, that is the next generation after the Saba, it is called as Maktu. So this classification is based on who is the original narrator. One type of classification. The second type of classification, according to Ibn Salah, is based on the number of chain of narrators and it is divided into two types the mutawatir hadith and the ahad hadith in the mutawatir hadith there are umpteen there are several number of narrators the number is not specified it says several at every stage and this mutawatir hadith is divided into two further mutawatir in terms of wordings mutawatir in terms of meaning I'll give you an example of mutawatir in terms of wording. That means all the hadith that you find, the wording is exactly the same. And mutawatir means at every stage there are various narrators. Like at the Saba level, there are various Sabas who narrated it. Then there are various other people who narrated from the Saba and the next level and the third level. One example is a very famous mutawatir hadith, which is a hadith. Mutawatir in words that our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said that anyone who deliberately or purposefully tells a lie in my name, he prepares his seat in the hellfire. Now this hadith, the words are same, but natural Arabic, this is the English translation which may differ, but in Arabic the words are the same. It was narrated by no less than 74 sahabas. 74 different sahabas narrated this hadith that they said that they heard the Prophet say this. 74. Now, in the next level, you have much more than 74 people 
who have narrated it. Each Sabah may have narrated it to many other people. So in the second level, you have more than 100 of narrators. Then third level, you have another few hundred narrators. So overall, there are hundreds of people who have narrated this hadith. And all those who have narrated, the words are exactly the same. So the scholars of hadith, they say, it cannot be possible that hundreds of people are narrating exactly the same words. It has to be correct. There is no difference of opinion that these are verbatim the words of the beloved Prophet Muhammad So many narrators at every level. That means the minimum narrators of this hadith are 74. Next level there are more than 74. Third level more than that. So minimum. So if there are several narrators at each level, then the hadith is called mutawatir. If the words are same, it's called mutawatir in words. Let's come to the second example. Mutawatir in meaning. The hadith of the Prophet Muhammad when he said that for Fajr Salah there are two rakat, there are four rakat for the Zohar Salah, Asar Salah, Nisha Salah, and for Maghrib Salah there are three rakat. There are various narrators at each level, umpteen number of narrators. Many Sahabas who narrated it, followed by Sahabas, but the words kept on differing. But the meaning was the same. Though the words differed, the meaning was the same, that in Fajr there were two rakat, in Zohar, Asar and Isha there were four rakat to be prayed, and in Maghrib three rakat. So here the Muhaddisin say it is mutawatir in meaning. Meaning is the same, the words may differ. So this was the type of mutawatir hadith, two types. In the Ahad hadith, it is further divided into three types of hadith. One is Mashur, second is Aziz, and third is Gharib. Now, all the Ahad Hadith, they do not meet the criteria of Mutawatir. The highest level of Ahad Hadith is the Mashur, that minimum three or more narrators have narrated at each level. That means minimum number of narrators at each level, if there are three, then it is called as a Mashur Hadith. That means that minimum three Sahabas have narrated it. Then the Tabain may be more than three, but if minimum three is there at each level, it is called a Mashur Hadith, or even more than three. It can be four also, yet it's called a Mashur Hadith. If it is several, then it becomes a Mutawatir. But if it's three at each level, or four at each level, it is called as a Mashur Hadith. It is the highest in terms of Ahad Hadith. The second level in Ahad Hadith is the Aziz Hadith. In Aziz Hadith, there are minimum two narrators at each level. In the chain of narrators. And minimum two Sabahs have narrated it. And at the other levels also two or more have continued with the chain. So that's called Aziz Hadith. The third category of Aziz Hadith is the Garib. That means at any one stage only one person. Other stages there may be 10, 20, no problem. And the best example is the Hadith of Bukhari which was narrated by the Umar may Allah be pleased with him. It is the first hadith of Sahih Bukhari, world number one, book number one, hadith number one, that our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, Innamal amalu bin niya, that your actions are based on your intention. All the hadith, there are hundreds of hadith, all hadith that are there, it goes to Hazrat Umar may Allah be peace with him. Says, Umar may Allah be peace with him, said that the Prophet said. Below, after Hazrat Umar, May Allah be with them. There are many narrators. But at one stage, there is only one narrator. No other Sahaba besides Hazrat Umar narrated this. So this becomes Ahad, a Gharib Hadith. It's a Sahih Hadith. It is there in Bukhari. It's a Sahih Hadith. But it is Ahad Hadith and a Gharib Hadith. All the chains reach to Hazrat Umar. May Allah be with them. There is no other Sahaba who narrated this. So this is called as Ahad Gharib Hadith. Ahad and Gharib Hadith. So this was the second type of classification based on number of narrators. There are various classifications, I'll just come to the main one which we are discussing. The third type of classification of hadith is based on authenticity. In this type of classification, there are two types of hadith. One is makhbul, accepted and the other